Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, to today's stream where we are going to talk about how to optimize LinkedIn and your job search strategy so recruiters and jobs actually find you. And this is a topical topic today because, as you know, if you're watching on my channel, that I live the abroad lifestyle. And a big component of living abroad full time is that you have to have remote source income. A lot of guys don't think about that. They get to another country and then they find that their runway is running out very quickly. So here I have a great friend of mine, an esteemed guest, Mr. Bentley Ham of Hammerhead Business Solutions. He's also a Men of Now community member and admin. So if you guys are in the community, you all know Bentley. If you're not in the community, you want to get in at some point, I'll, I'll talk more about that here as we uh, wrap up the cast. But Bentley is actually a LinkedIn profile optimization specialist, internet marketing guru, strategist, consultant, what have you. And Bentley, I'll, you know what, I'll just give you the floor and let you describe what it is exactly you do and how uh, we're going to help people out today. Yeah, uh, cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, Jared and I are great friends. We've met, uh, hung out several times in a couple of cities, had some fun and always been great. Uh, I have a marketing agency. I specialize in um, brand development and uh, um, positioning and strategy is, is my key focus. Uh, marketing is such a broad topic. Nobody's an expert in everything. So you have to have uh, people who are really good in the areas that you're not to support you, which is a big reason why Jared and I get along great because he's good at things that I'm not. And so he's uh, he's an ace in my pocket, so to speak. Uh, and yeah, I use LinkedIn a lot. Um, I drive probably about 70 to 80% of my business from LinkedIn and about 20% from uh, in-person uh, personal networking. So, uh, and I know several people who make their living doing freelance or remote work, um, either found or sourced through LinkedIn almost exclusively. In fact, there are several people I know that do it exclusively. Uh, I have some friends that their entire business model is running business through LinkedIn. So I'm going to help Jaron kind of uh, optimize his profile a little bit here and sort of teach you guys some tips and tricks as to how to make connections and uh, put yourself in front of people who are looking for people so that you can have them find you or have them be looking for jobs for you. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Before we dive into that, I just want to mention that um, I've noticed uh, for a bit of context here, I've noticed that I've been abroad for a few years now. A couple of years ago, I had no problem, especially post-pandemic, to where there was one week where, I think it was March of 2021, I literally started a job search on Monday, and by Friday, I had multiple offers. And then there was a while where I was actually able to uh, work for a couple of different clients and kind of double dip at that point, which was really nice because you can, build, you can start building not actually income, but wealth very quickly. So... Since then, the, there's been ups and downs in the market. I've been doing some freelance type stuff. I've gotten more into the content stuff and then backed off and then involved in a bunch of different projects. But I got to the point where I realized, you know what? If I want these multiple projects to take off, I need some serious income again. And as much as I love the whole, okay, let's go into the entrepreneurship type thing. Uh, you need to be your own boss. You need to not work for someone else. There is a point where I, try, I mapped everything out and realized, okay, I can get to where I want to go quicker. If I just lean into what I'm good at, I'm more at the uh, corporate level, marketing side consulting, and comes down to the point where like, you know what, I need, I need a full-time job again. So this time around, I've noticed that the market is not as hot as it was a couple of years ago, which means that I need all the help I can get. I figured, although uh, on my channel, at least I do talk a lot about the living abroad strategies, uh, fitness, finance dating, all that kind of stuff, just general lifestyle stuff. I'm going to start peeling back the curtain a bit and showing you guys an inside glimpse into my life to show, okay, well, here's how you actually go about doing it. So uh, no, the number one thing, again, that a lot of guys and gals forget is how to source income remotely. So LinkedIn, well, Bentley, I'll let you give a LinkedIn spiel. What, why, yeah. why use LinkedIn over just job boards or other types of methods? Well, uh, I have a bit of a personal I, – I, call it something different. Everybody says LinkedIn is social media. Uh, I have a slight disagreement and slight uh, different look at it. Uh, in my opinion, LinkedIn is professional social networking. Uh, it's a, literally a, a networking event that never ends. It's online on a continuous ongoing basis. Uh, if you're somebody who does freelance work or is in business, you know the power of networking. Meeting people, making connections is how you how you get business done and how you find people to do the things that you can't do or uh, find people who need you to do things for them. So uh, I look at it a little bit different because of that. And 
it is a it is a very good relationship builder when you use it correctly. Um, something that a lot of people don't know is the actual highest paid source, uh, LinkedIn's highest revenue source where they get the most money from is recruiters. So if you are looking for a job uh, or something like that, LinkedIn is the place to be because there are more recruiters here than anywhere else. And they are the ones who actually fund most of the platform. So we're going to learn how to optimize your profile to attract those recruiters. And we're gonna learn how to uh, you know, form relationships with some of those recruiters and get their attention. Because at the end of the day, they get paid to fill positions. So you become something that they can sell. So we just need to make you something that is easy to sell. I think that's a great way to kick it off. So in doing so, let me see if I can do a screen share here. If it has no personal, private, proprietary type information, but I don't mind getting this out there um, in terms of like you guys see more where I used to work uh, at least. And then as I go through the job search and then uh, I start getting onboarded, then we can follow up and go through some strategies in terms of like how to manage your LinkedIn uh, correctly on an ongoing basis, especially for guys, if you're if you're taking on multiple clients or if you have multiple jobs, whatever, there are ways around that. Uh, the whole idea is called overemployed. There's a site called overemployed.com. So that's a strategy I've employed in the past, but for now I'm just looking, I'm just looking for the first one just to kind of, add some fuel to the fire, get some momentum going. And then maybe I decide that I don't want to take on multiple clients. Um, as, as you know, I'm, for those who have been following my channel for a while, I live a fairly minimalist lifestyle. But then again, I'm working actively. I'm building my social life and really cool things come up. It's like, well, you know, I need some more income now. I can't be living like uh, as minimalist as I was before. So uh, Bentley, do you see my screen there? I sure do. And I've got your profile pulled up on my other screen here as well. So if you see me looking off to the side, I've got a, a bigger version of it. Oh, there we go. Zoom in. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Let's get it nice and big. So maybe not zoom, maybe not zoom in too much. Okay. That's, that's good. Um, yeah, do you want to walk people through maybe what we're looking at? Just LinkedIn layout and then yeah. um, anything that I'm doing well from a best practice standpoint, anything I'm not, I know. You, you did internally in the men of now a, work, a LinkedIn workshop a few months ago. I did take some of those tips, but not all of them. So this is probably a, a hybrid version, not as optimized as it could be. Yeah, no. And I've since then learned a lot as well uh, and put together an entirely different uh, and new workshop that I'm just getting ready to release here shortly. Uh, and this is one of the things, if you do join the men of now, uh, the initial run through on how to fully optimize your profile is one of the giveaways that uh, I have for the, the guys in the group. Um, so one of the biggest things when you drive somebody to your LinkedIn profile, most people look at their profile as a social media profile, but a properly optimized LinkedIn profile is actually a landing page. You can direct people to get a okay. result you want. Uh, and so the way we do that is the biggest piece of real estate is in this case, your picture of, I believe that's Seattle. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe so. I actually, I think this is a hybrid of advice that you gave me and actually some recruiters. Uh, they told me that when, when recruiters search, even if they're remote positions, they'll look in larger markets. So I'm from Eastern Washington State. When I worked for Deloitte, I was based out of their Seattle office. So actually a Deloitte recruiter said, hey, although you live in Mexico most of the year, put Seattle, Washington on there so you actually show up. Um, and yeah. then uh, Josh Renegade Wingman, one of the other members of Men of Now mentioned, uh, for his profile that he just does a skyline of whatever market he's in that picture mm -hmm. I have there. Um, it's a picture of me from a meetup event we did a little bit ago. I ran it through tune me for that, for like the, the AI filters. Yeah. I don't know if maybe that was a good idea or not. I think in that picture originally, I'm actually shaking a cocktail. So I got the cocktail out of there. I got the, <laughs> I the cigar on the other hand, cigars out of there too. They don't need to know that. But uh, <laughs> in terms of like Bentley said, th this is a landing page. And I suppose if you go back to regular web development days or more traditional web development, this would technically be above the fold or it's the first thing they see. Um, yes. Well, technically, yeah. Technically above the fold and LinkedIn would probably be the menu items there. But in terms of my landing page, this is the first thing that people will see. Absolutely. So um, yeah, for, uh, for professional and for trying to, um, develop relationships and build business, I would not recommend uh, an AI or filtered type photo, or at least an obviously okay. filtered one, um, because people are looking for authentic. There is a lot of fake uh, and you want to be able to prove that you're not uh, is a big thing is this is this is reinforcing who you are. 
um, and the skyline of the uh, of the city, um, that photo right there, that is the largest piece of real estate that you have on LinkedIn. So yeah, you, I have to let some guests out. So yeah. I'll let you go. <laughs> so yeah, that that banner where Jaron has the uh, photo of the city there, the skyline in the background. Um, that's what we effectively call uh, your LinkedIn banner. I think they call it your headline image or something like that. Um, we refer to it as a banner. That's your largest piece of real estate. It's the first thing that people see. So when you're trying to attract somebody, uh, you need to capture their interest right away. So you really want to take advantage of that and create uh, an image or a graphic or something in there that has some text that instantly drives some curiosity as far as what you do so that people who are looking for your services are intrigued to then go further and actually explore your profile. If they see something that doesn't tell them anything and they've got a quota and need to find a certain number of people for the day or something like that, um, th they look at this and go, I'm going to have to work to figure it out and there's going to be easier ones. So they'll skip off to an easier one. We want to make it as easy as possible for anybody who's uh, happening to land on our on our profile uh, to instantly know what it is that we do. So the way I describe it is your banner is your is what we use for your attraction or to capture interest. Your headline, which Jaron has as a marketing leader in SaaS and FinTech, that's your reinforcement statement. That's where you reinforce what it is that you do for people. And there are several structures to um, build better ones of those in. Because if you notice off on the side to the right, we look beside uh, under Omar, I don't know how to pronounce that name properly, but Omar uh, Abdelkader, he's got founder and sniper scale building funnels at and advertising, advertising is cut off. That's actually that headline section that Jaron has, marketing leader in SaaS and FinTech. So anytime your profile gets highlighted somewhere in comments or posts or uh, people also viewed like that on the side, that part is in there. So you want to make sure you have very, very good information as far as what you do and who you do it for. Um, so that when your snippets show up like that, people know what you're looking or I'm sorry, excuse me, people know what you do to drive curiosity, to make them come look at your profile. So uh, I don't know if you're still there, Jaron, or not. Uh, and then they've got, he's into his, so another thing too, you'll notice that whenever you look at your profile, it's never the same as everybody else's. Uh, and that's because you're always in editor mode. So there, you've got the little pencils all over the place on the screen there. Um, every one of those is to do an edit and to go in there, whereas the public doesn't see that. So uh, in this case where the pencil is beside the gold in, uh, in for the LinkedIn logo, that would be a bell uh, on a, when you view this publicly. Um, the open to work, uh, badge in that, that is uh, shown privately. And um, so you're seeing things on the inside that you wouldn't see as a viewer to what it is built off. So you've got some messages there. I don't know if you want to close those down just so people don't know what you got coming, Jaron. Yeah, I opened another tab right now. Ah, okay. <laughs> so um, we'll scroll down a little bit further because actually something I've noticed about yours, which you might not have even known about yet. All right, give me a second here. I'm responding to this message that so clears out my notifications in a different tab. So, cool. I, I, so I, I do somewhat have it to the point to where recruiters are starting to reach out to me, but again, it could obviously Good. be optimized. And while I do this yeah. real quick, so I don't show the contents of my very messy photos folder because there might be some not safe for work ones in there, just leave it <laughs> at that. I'll change my profile photo real quick and then let's see if this works sure. better. So. At one point, I went home with my family. We did a photo session this last summer. I had the photographer pull me aside, do some headshots, and then I believe nice. I put it in a LinkedIn banner. So let's try this one. Doesn't look as cool. I look like a dork, but I think that might be. Oh, I don't really like the the lighting there, but we'll we'll go ahead and see how that looks. Did the change catch? Let me see in this tab. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and there's another. Yeah, there if, if you have a picture of you for anybody as well, um, that, uh, so like, here's a great example. You had somebody pull you aside, get a headshot. If you've got a picture like that, that, um, 
would make a good picture, but there's stuff in the background. There's a, a website you can go to called remove.bg and you yeah. take the picture, you upload it in there and it pulls the background out of the image. And so now you have a backgroundless image and you can load that up and it'll come with either the plain white background or you can take and put it into Canva and you can put a colored background uh, behind your, yeah. your image, which makes it pop. Uh, yeah, I did have the LinkedIn blue colors behind it. I don't know why it didn't upload this photo, so I'll have to go back into Canva yeah. and see there. Yeah, and that's something we can, you know, we'll work on as we go through. So uh, we'll scroll down a little bit further on yours. So okay, um, one thing too. I, so for me and my socials, yeah. I like to verify on my profiles. I've had issues with this one. It gives you a, a QR code, and then I scan it, and then it just doesn't take me anywhere. So I have to figure oh, that really? out. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what the issue is. Maybe if maybe it's because I'm abroad or um, I have to throw on the VPN to do that. I usually leave my VPN off because it screws up all my single sign-ons and then yep. locks me out of my accounts, which really uh, affects my efficiency uh, in yes. terms of workflows. Yeah. Okay. I know you. I know you commented on open to work. I did have the open to work thing on here at one point, but I read some yep. articles saying to not put that publicly. So I have open to work, but only recruiters can see that. Exactly. So that, that okay. is the trick. Uh, and that is a, cause that, that keys target or that, that targets the um, recruiters. They actually, with part of what they pay, I've never seen the inside of it, but I've been told that uh, the recruiters get the notifications of all the people who are open to work recruiters only because yep. they know that they're usually higher valued candidates. Um, like for example, let's say, you know, there's an executive that has had enough with where he is and he wants to find another job. This is somebody who makes, you know, multiple six figures a year. Uh, if he lets his employer know that he's looking for other work because of the risk factor and the knowledge that he has, the, yep. the access to information he has, they're going to can his ass on the spot. So yep. to keep that on the down low, LinkedIn has this feature in here where you can set that. Like if you, Jaren clicked on that little pencil and you open to work, the show details there, you can actually select yeah, no, visible that. only to recruiters, not the whole world. And that is down there at the very bottom. If you scroll right to the very bottom. Yep, recruiters yeah. only. So there's a recruiters only. And Rather than this little that. badge. Yeah. yeah, when you go all LinkedIn members, that's where it puts that little badge and everybody, the whole world knows you're open to, to work. So, um, that's a, a good trick or something. Even if you uh, like, I have a uh, full disclosure on here. Mine is set to open to work for recruiters as well. Um, because I do contract work for some large companies with my marketing agency. Sometimes they'll want a strategy or they'll want a different opinion on a strategy or a strategy from outside of the normal box thinking that is going to help them expand into new markets. So this trips that off for them when they're looking for that. Um, All right. So anything else we missed? This, uh, by yeah. default, I think it shows my last employer, my university. Um, yeah. I have a master's degree, so it doesn't show my undergrad. It shows my master's degree. And then, again, it, it's Seattle, Washington. These are both good names. Yeah. So, like, if you're from the Pacific Northwest, you know you know what Gonzaga University is. It's one of you the bet. better ones. Everyone knows what Deloitte is, so I'm, I'm glad those badges are on there. I'll get into yeah. that as we go through. Um, so you have – oh, this is very yeah. cool. I have yeah, not seen the inside of this yet. So um, here's a cool little thing is LinkedIn is actually in the process of changing profiles and you have one oh. of the betas. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> we're, we're slowly discovering them. So uh, a friend of mine, his entire business model is optimizing uh, profiles for executives. So the other day I had, uh, was Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, one of those evenings, I had a client um, reach out to me uh saying hey you know i want to have a meeting with you and work with you and and all that and so i went and looked at his profile and all the stuff and he has one of the betas as well but a slightly different version which no one had seen before so i instantly screen captured it you know got a hold of my friend who's in the uk <laughs> so like, hey i found one of the betas that's done this way check it out so we were breaking yeah. down and analyzing but um when i look at yours as a user on my other screen. Um, so maybe we can just switch that. We'll just show that real quick. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and show can your we, screen. Can we change that? How do we? Yeah, let me stop present? screen. You should, you should have presenter controls. Oh, can I do it? Present, share screen. I use Zoom all the time, so I'm not as quick on this one. Uh, entire, let's do the entire screen of this one. 
and we'll share that up. All right. So okay. this is Jaren's profile. I do everything in dark mode because white screens burn my eyes after hours. They uh, do. <laughs> I spend a lot of time on a computer, so I'm a dark mode guy for everything. Um, so this is Jaren's profile in dark mode. Uh, and from a user standpoint, which if you notice, like I'd said, there's no pencil here. The bell is here because for me, I would click the bell and this turns the notifications on anytime Jaren does something, I'll be notified. It'll show oh, okay. the notifications bell here. Um, and this is something that tells me Jaren has a premium account. Uh, anybody who has a premium account that has this has the ability to see, uh, gets more analytics, be able to see who's viewed their profile and things like that. Some people worry about that. Some people don't. Uh, I have extensions where I run Notion, so potential clients, I can drop them into a CRM and start to do things with them. But this is what I was talking about right here. Your About section is located directly underneath of your Intro section, which if we just switch over to mine, uh, once again, we're back in the Analytics site on mine, um, my Featured section is actually, these are the things that are hidden from the public. My Featured section is directly underneath my Intro section. And then it's my activity and my out is below that. Okay. Yeah. We have one of the new ones where they've raised the about section above. So that's exactly. interesting to know. Um, a key thing with the about section being here is only the first four lines are visible until somebody clicks see more. Mm -hmm. So you really want to concentrate on putting something there that's going to grab people's attention. And this is a mistake that a lot of people make uh, when it comes to their about section. Everybody writes their about section as it's about me. And it's not. Uh, okay. That's a great about, point. Yeah. This is the thing that most people don't understand. Your about section is your opportunity to tell either potential clients or in your case, potential employers or potential contractors that you could subcontract for, freelance for, whatever the case may be. This is your opportunity to tell them the transformation that you would provide if they worked with you. Okay. So I, I probably need to rewrite that. So, there. yeah, I, you want to, you want to, because at the end of the day, if somebody is looking to hire you, they don't care what you do on your weekends. They don't care what you do on your time yeah. off. That's not what they're looking for, right? It's, if I hire you, what is it going to do for me? What transformation are you going to provide? And when you do that, it changes a lot. And then you'll actually get people reading that and finding out more information about you. So okay. that's what's up on that. So we kind of work on a structure with that. And then this is something that here's a trick that I don't. Uh, that I do whenever I'm helping somebody write their profile. This is my about section. I see. Yeah, this. I was just looking at that in a different tab. So how'd you come up with that? I, I have a business coach from years ago. He has some uh, LinkedIn copy template to where you plug in a bunch of stuff Mad Lib style and it outputs the text for you. Then I'd probably run that through chat GPT and just have it clean it up and make it a little more punchy. So uh, is that kind of what you did for that? Did he pull it off of the template or? No, I, I, I wrote this. Um, and so as you notice the, if we look at just a couple of comparisons and this is just an experiment, we don't really know how much of a difference this makes yet. Um, but so Jaren's goes all the way across, takes advantage of the full screen on desktop, but most people actually scroll LinkedIn on, uh, mobile. On, on a mobile. So when this gets compressed, all this text gets line wrapped and this two lines becomes four lines or five lines. Oh, I see. So I laid mine out deliberately to only use half the screen on desktop, but it's optimized mm -hmm. for mobile. So this won't line wrap. If you look at it on a phone, it looks exactly the same way. Okay. That's good. Too. All wrote in a structure where I go two lines, one, three, three, one, three, this is one sentence, but it wraps over into two lines, another single sentence, single, back to three, three. This is actually a cadence. And this is a psychological hack, a psychology hack. When you see a block of text, subconsciously your brain goes, this is complicated. Yep. And so it doesn't want to read it because it's going to take effort. Whereas for, when you have for email stuff, marketing, I do the same thing. And then the human eye scans a screen, whether it's mobile or desktop, in an F type pattern across yep. and down. A hundred percent. 
And so when you have white space, you've tricked the brain into thinking this is going to be easy. So it'll start to engage. And then you throw in a one, three, one rhythm cadence. And as people read it in their mind, they don't even realize it. They kind of almost start singing it. Mm -hmm. And once you start, once you it looks done, like song lyrics, it actually exactly. does. Yeah. Now you're engaged and now you'll go all the way to the end. So there is, you want to get people to read your information. That is a key hack right there. And all the great writer posts um, that are producing content on LinkedIn and, and Twitter and things like that, they're all doing this. If you start looking at it, you'll start to see a pattern and it'll be so obvious. So <laughs> there's a good hack with that one. Um, but we'll go back to yours now. Um, oh, so this is one thing I wanted to show before we jump over. So this is what I was talking about with a banner of this is your biggest piece of real estate. So in a split second, you know what I do because it's right there in bold text. It's the first thing you see. I help service businesses get more customers. If you have a service business and you see this in a split second, you know that I'm somebody who can help you. And that makes you want to spend more time investigating and actually checking out my profile. And is that is that clickable, that book of discovery called there? And does it it's take not. it to Calendly? It's not. It okay. is not. Um, and that is, maybe I need to add something on that. This is the, the profile landing page part I was talking about um, where uh, I can show another one actually. Um, I'll grab my friend Darren's. This one is, Darren is very good. So he says right in here to go to his featured section and you go down to his oh, featured okay. section and you click on those and those will take you to a Calendly. Okay, yeah, I need, I need to do something like that then. Cause I, I set up, I have Calendly for coaching offers and all sorts yeah. of other offers, but I set one up yesterday that I can give to recruiters. So just say, um, I, you, you mentioned I have the upgraded account, I do. Yes. Um, so that way I can send in messages to people. So I'll, I'll look yes. for a job. I'm getting more targeted rather than just spraying and spraying and praying spraying. or doing the shotgun approach. I'm finding exact jobs like, okay, do I like the company? Do I like their values? Do I like what the job entails? Is it in the salary band I'm looking for? So rather than sending out hundreds of resumes, I'm sending out maybe dozens of resumes and I'm spending for every single one, what I call a job application package. So I'm doing all of the cover letters. I'm filling out the application complete. Mm -hmm. uh, in a completed fashion. So there's a lot of things that aren't required on applications, but they're there. So I figured the more information, the better to make myself stand out amongst other candidates. And then when I fire it off, I go over and find who the recruiter is or the hiring manager and reach out to them directly and say, especially when it says this job has over a hundred applicants, I reach out to them directly like, like, Hey, just want to, just want to let you know, I applied for this job, be on the lookout for my application, a couple bullet points. Um, a lot of the recruiters use three to five bullet points, use a couple, just, driving home why I'm the guy and then drop them a Calendly link so they can just get through to me directly. And I found it's kind of like the online dating type topics. Uh, when you take more of a direct approach, maybe you'll get less responses, but the responses you do get, that means they're more interested. So those have yeah. been resulting in more interviews for me and kind of streamlining the process a bit. Absolutely. So this is something we can do on your profile and, and we'll, uh, we'll do that as well. So if you go in the top, you have, on your profile, you'll see this add profile section mm -hmm. um, and you can add that. And it's not in the course, it's in the recommended is the featured section. I already have it, so I can't add it on mine, mm -hmm. but if we add this into yours, that brings in this featured section. And that allows you to then put this on. We saw Darren's had two side by side because he has multiple mm -hmm. offers. For somebody like you who's looking for work um, or, uh, Freelance options, you may have one or two. Uh, I yeah. always recommend people stick to a maximum of two. You can go more, but they start to get pushed off the screen. Yeah, you don't uh, want to clutter the real estate. Right. And what a lot of people do is they put their best performing posts in the featured section. And when you do that, you're giving up your opportunity to, to de-platform people. So the way this one is set up, if you notice, it says right here that it's a link. And if we click on it, it literally goes directly to my Calendly page. Okay, that's it I instantly I deep that. yep. Now, most people can't figure out how to do that. And that's actually kind of a quote unquote LinkedIn hack. So to create this, when you're doing it, you, you have the option of what you're going to put in the featured section, you would put in a link. So if I was going to add one, we would add a link. 
And then that's in here is where you'd put the URL of what you want. And then it would open up into this section. And then you add your thumbnail. Now, any descriptive text that you want to have, you want to put that in a graphic image like I have where um, yep. you booked a free discovery call. You don't want to have any characters whatsoever in description. Nothing. Okay. Not completely empty. You have to put in a title. You have no choice. That's a mandatory thing. But I'll show you the difference. When I clicked on it, um, it went directly to Calendly. Let's put in a period. One tiny little period. You'd think changes nothing. And we go back to it. It now opens it up. It opens a post. Yeah. It opens as a post. And now to get to Calendly, I've got to click view. And most people don't know that. And most people don't even know to click view. And it'll never take them to your Calendly. So they're trying to figure out how to book a call with you and they can't. So that is why you want to have all of your description in this case. We click on it. Anything in your graphics. And that way you are telling people what to do without having to use the description feature on LinkedIn that makes this pop up open up. And that's instead, interesting. Yeah, that's not intuitive that it would be view. View is exactly. a terrible call. It's a terrible call to action. To me, that indicates it'll just expand the image, which I wouldn't intuitively do either. So from just a general digital marketing best practice that you usually want to reduce what's called friction. So you don't want people to be confused. You want your conversion path to be clearly outlined and then for them to intuitively do what they do and take them where you want them to go. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And that's exactly it. that re removing friction. You know, that is the whole thing. You want to make it as easy as possible. And so that's why to do that. And with you looking for, uh, for jobs, Jaren, you should absolutely have a featured section. Um, I will definitely do that. And then I think that about, I'll punch that up. I think I actually have some copy I've generated before. So um, yeah. I, I, I do different stints in my career where I'll, where I'll do just consulting for two or three years. And then I get to the point where like, you know what? I want to, I want a career position where I can grow with the company and expand my skill set and make a lot more money and yeah. up my, my asking price. So I think I'm in one of those phases now. So I have had separate versions of my profiles before I'll go look at and see what I had for the consulting offer and then tweak that and add that to my about. Yeah. And then you can, um, if you want to keep your skyline or you want to do something different, I would recommend. I'll do a banner. I would recommend doing a banner that has, you know, something Call in there that gets people's attention, right? To and then exactly it says to book a, you know, to book a consulting call. Check my featured section. Yep, I'll do exactly mm -hmm. that. So um, you can actually add a link into the upper part of your profile as well. Uh, it's this. What is here is a book of discovery call. Yep. That's located in, in your intro section uh, and your custom button. We have premium accounts. So we have the option to pick the custom button. I never recommend people do that because they actually convert less, surprisingly. Um, but it's in there. And you would put your link. Once again, my calendar link is there. And you get to choose your text. Make sure you put some text in there because if you don't, it just puts the URL, which doesn't really yeah, very exactly. highly. Yeah, you want to now, call to action, and you did, you did it right. You you always lead with, always lead with the verb. So rather than um, yes, di well, discover more be one too. Um, so don't say something like for more information, click the link right. here. You just say, you know, discover more or explore or whatever. Yes. Um, now I saw one, and I I think I know how to do it. Let me. Uh, I'm going to stop the share because I don't want to go. I know it's tough in these live environments because I'm yeah. always mindful of. All right, I'm <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to open up somebody's. I don't want to. I don't want to open somebody's stuff or show something I'm not supposed to because Here we got I do up. a lot of business on LinkedIn, so I don't really want uh -huh. to. There's some things I don't want to just share with people. Hey, uh, hey Brianna, I haven't seen you around lately. So Brianna yeah. says hiring freeze and health or hiring freeze and healthcare lifting, but always had issues finding work. Thanks for doing this tutorial. Yeah, I'm in the same boat right now. I've never really had issues finding work in my career. Sometimes it's taken longer than I'd like, up to a couple of months. But this time around, and I've heard it from recruiters too, that I've reached out to recruiters in my network and they say, Hey, if you know a job for me, let me know. Or friends of mine that have early stage startups or have businesses, hey man, is there anything you got going on? Any sort of uh, marketing work that we can outsource that I can hire VAs for and I'll just PM it. I'll give you a discounted rate. I got fractional CMO type services. And a lot of my buddies who are business owners are like, hey, we've kind of taken a hit too. We're just trying to 
trying to stay afloat. So I don't like using the economy as an excuse, but uh, for any of those who have been outside lately, uh, the economy is terrible right now. So that mm-hmm. definitely percolates down into the job market. Hopefully that changes soon, uh, but it doesn't look like, I, I suppose from a political standpoint, the current administration we have in the US or even Canada for that manner, uh, they're not really interested in, in having a strong economy. So we got we to gotta deal with the hand that's been dealt. So that's why I figured any of this type of stuff, anything you can do to give yourself a leg up, especially in lean economic conditions, you certainly need to do so. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, um, we need, we need another political leader to come in and say the, the basic okay. phrase, it's about the economy, stupid, because <laughs> it, it sucks and everybody's uh, doing yeah. it. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, uh, that's great, Brandon. I hope you, hopefully you get some stuff out of this. Uh, and Jaron and I are actually going to do an ongoing on this because, you know, Jaron's a friend of mine and he's, you know, he's looking for work and I want to do everything I can to help my friends succeed. So we're going to do an ongoing thing. So um, we're planning to do this every Friday if that if it works out at that. Uh, if not, we'll pre-record and we'll start releasing them one way or another. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe just walk people through the process uh, and, and get people to call in. You know, hey, I'm struggling too. Is there something I can do? And, and we'll help you out uh, and help people get going. So I wanted to share this one because this, I actually connected with this guy yesterday morning and it blew my mind away. Uh, it is a fantastic little hack um, that I am, I think I know how he did it, but I don't know for hundred percent sure yet. So what he has done is it looks like he's recorded a voice note and he's taken that, that, uh, screen of the text of the, the digitals and put it in there. It's actually not an audio file. It's a link that goes to his website. So oh, interesting. This, and is it like a video <laughs> sales letter? Right. So he has put this part in, uh, when I go to my edit custom button, let's go to the link. He has put that audio file looking thing right here where I have book a discovery call. He has put that in there. And I, I guarantee you this guy has oh, okay. a high click through because of this. I've, it is brilliant. I had uh-huh. to show it because I just, when I saw this, I'm like, oh, I didn't know you could put an audio file. So I clicked it and it took me to his website. And so I went back to his profile. I'm like, well, no, it was an audio file. And I clicked it again. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. he got me. <laughs> I, I was actually thinking too, because I, I own my personal domain, like the Jaron Scott dot yes. whatever. And um, I was thinking of, of dusting it off. I don't think there's anything there right now, but turning that into more of a portfolio. And then again, building this like like you would an actual market marketing and sales funnel for a client. So they click through, go to me, video sales letter. Hey, I'm Jaron Scott. You know, I'm looking, you know, I specialize in da, 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 da. I help such and such people achieve such and such results in such and such industry. So those sorts of impact statements and then get them to actually see me. And again, uh, guys that follow my channel, I talk a lot about online dating. It really does come down to how you put yourself out there in the digitally mediated format to stick out from the competition. And then all of these little hacks, Okay, one little hack isn't going to make or break it, but but if you have 20, 30, 40, 50 little hacks and they're all working in conjunction, then that's where you're going to start seeing some serious progress. If you've got 20, 30, 40 little hacks and each one is worth 1% higher chance of you getting a job. That's exactly how I see it. You've got 20, 30, 40 more percent chance of hitting a job. Take advantage of everything that you can, right? At the end of the day, finding a job is marketing. And an interview is sales. So That's exactly, you, it. you know, your your LinkedIn profile and your job search, think of it from a marketing and sales standpoint. You're trying to make yourself as the best option there is, and you're trying to sell yourself and sell your services. So, uh, so it's, but I, I think that's, I think this is such a fantastic hack. And yeah, you put your profile back up. That's great. <laughs> I, I want to, I, I never thought of that. So I, like I said, I found this yesterday morning. I had a really busy day yesterday and then I had to do a presentation last night for uh, one of the charities that's in the building that I'm in. Uh, so uh-huh. I didn't have a chance to actually investigate this. This is my project this evening. I'm going to figure out how he did that. Um, yeah, I'm going to play around with this this weekend too. And again, um, like I've covered the dating topics on my channel. Same thing. Understand the platform and then utilize and maximize all the features they have available to you. So I need to take my own advice and do it in the professional regard. Exactly. So, and this is, 
uh, so remember what your about section is right here underneath of your, mm -hmm. so they've moved that around where his featured is the very next thing. And he's got some posts in there. He's not taking advantage of that opportunity to uh, deplatform people, but with the amount of followers that he has. So I have some extension software. That's why I get to see how many followers people have. Uh, not everybody gets to see that. Uh, I don't even remember what they are. I've had them for so long. I'll have to break that down so I can teach people that. Um, mm -hmm. So he probably deplatforms a lot of people with the his funny little link, so he doesn't have to do it so much in his <laughs> oh, speech. That's right. section. But it, it, it's brilliant. Like, like I said, I had to share it because it's just it's the first time I've ever seen it. Uh, so that's a big thing. And that that link there that shows the the fifty five seconds does that take does that take to his landing page too, or does that actually play an audio file? The, the whole thing. Like if like if I click on this, it's literally directly to his website. Okay, so how do you get it to show the 55 seconds? Because to me, that indicates that he uploaded an audio file. And I know. saw that it, okay. Yeah, I'll have to I know it does. That. I, what I, and I don't know. because, like I said, I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. What I believe that he has done is recorded an audio message mm -hmm. and sent it to whatever, to whoever, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. And then he copied that because it shows up in a text, right? as an audio file, it shows up exactly that way. Like in a, in a text message, it shows up like this. I think what he did is he copied that and then pasted it in. And because it's considered text characters, it got accepted by LinkedIn and got shown. That's what I was thinking too. He probably did something like that. Those are probably individual text characters. Uh, and, but I don't know what the characters are to be able to, because they're uh -huh. asking characters, you can do all of this stuff if you know how to do it, right? I'm not, so when I saw this, I, I still am blown away. <laughs> it's such a cool hack. I had yeah, to that's awesome. <laughs> um, so anyhow, so uh, guys, if you're if you're watching live, feel free to drop any questions or comments in the absolutely. chat. I do I do have to get running here in a few. Uh, I have a fairly aggressive interview schedule this morning. So what I'm doing is already currently working. I've, I've, I've done some hacks along the way. I've changed my strategy a bit. We can talk about this on future episodes of this recurring weekly series that I'll be doing with Bentley. So definitely let us know, reach out to myself or Bentley if you have any questions in terms of job search, sourcing business, freelance work, clients, consulting gigs, whatever on LinkedIn. Um, because there's there's some things that, that I've done. I've changed my strategy and my approach in various different aspects too. And then it's like anything in the digital world, you, you, you A-B test or what's called a multivariate test. You, mm -hmm. you, 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 run, you run a new way of doing things against what's been, what you've been doing and then see the results. And then you're always just trying to look to get that next little leg up or that next little edge. And then again, if you, if it's a reiterative process. If you do that over the long term, then you'll eventually start seeing monumental growth. And then for guys, once more that have followed my dating topics or content in the past, you'll know that that's exactly the approach I take there. Yeah. Exactly. So, and yeah, we're going to do this on an ongoing basis and until we get going, uh, get Jaron going and maybe even build him up a freelancing business just straight off of this with the knowledge that he's got or anybody else for that matter. If anybody's watching this and or sees it afterwards, you want to come to the next one and, uh, you know, ask us some questions uh, or have some tips. Maybe you guys know something we don't. And we'll yeah, that'd be great. To, to learn because this thing is a beast trying to uh, uh, trying to, you know, master it all is almost impossible. So uh, quickly, I know you've got to run shortly. I don't want to run you over time. Yeah, let, yeah let's run through the rest of the profile. And then maybe if you can comment on some of the sure. lesser known features there. And we can always we can always do this as a continuation, too. Yeah. Uh, do you want to pull it up or do you want me to? Uh, you can go ahead and do it. Yeah, oh, maybe okay. just give the quick run through as a rest. So I know. Whoops. Yeah, we might have to do it as a continuation. So like in my experience oh, yeah. section, for example, um, I know that there's a endorsement section, there's a skills section, there's yes. a testimonial section. So yeah, we still have a lot to touch on. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a, definitely. Uh, so we talked about some things to do with the about. Um, and so we'll work on that this week and then show people mm -hmm. kind of what we do next week. So you don't have a lot of activity. Um, for no, posts. I don't think I've done any posts or engagement or any type of stuff like that. Yeah. And um, in all reality, you don't have to do a ton of posting. So that's one thing a lot of people don't understand uh, is actually commenting is um, commenting will get you uh, more attention than posting will anyhow, if you do it correctly. Uh, you have your work experience here, which uh, you I know we worked through all that before. This is a, a big one for people. 
is your skills. So you have, you're allowed to put in up to 50 skills. But when you're looking for work, your three most important skills, you want to make sure you have at the top because they're the ones that are going to show um, uh, for people. And I believe it's 10. No, it is. It's the three. Okay. So sometimes there's two. It's so it's changing right now. Yours only shows two, but I know it used to show three. So we always said, have your three most important skills as the top. And so how you change that, if we quickly go to to mine, I'm not saving any changes. Um, If we go down to where mine are, you click the edit button, which is your pencil. Your pencil is always your edit button. And you click the three dots and the reorder. And that you just drag, drag and drop them. And you just drag, you just grab a hold of it and move it wherever you want, right? Oh, cool. I need to do that. Yeah, web, what was it, web marketing copywriting or something? That's not, the, it's not the strongest skill for a more senior level position. Right, yes. Yeah. So for your senior level positions that you are, are looking for and that you're capable of. The those go-to-market strategy, marketing planning might, might, be, might be a better yeah. one. But I'll and do some research. A big thing is if you still have relationships with the people where you did that, get them to endorse you. Okay. Because that actually, the, the more endorsements you have, uh, the higher you actually rank on the LinkedIn search algorithm. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and another thing is, this is great. You've got a uh, uh, recommendation here. This is something for anybody as you're going through um, work in your professional career. Once we have a job, we have a tendency to get complacent. Uh, and yep. it's only natural because we're comfortable. Things are going along. Anytime you do something where somebody at work gives you a congratulations, a pat on the back, commendation, blah, 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 always say thank you very much, especially if they've wrote it to you. If they wrote it to you, it's even better. Um, you know, thank you very much. Can I please get you to place this as a recommendation on LinkedIn? Okay. If you do it while it's running, it's people, it's in the fresh on the top of their mind. They're always more willing to do it. If all of a sudden, yep. like if you were to go back now to the people you were five years ago, years, hey, do you remember when I did this project? Can you can you give me a testimonial? Exactly, it's so like, far out of their mind, they're not going to do it. But if you keep on top of it and you go, like the people that do, will have a hundred recommendations. That social proof is just huge, and this is something that I myself am guilty of and haven't. I don't do this as much myself as I should. Um, but that is it's. Like anything in business, you do a good job. You want to get a recommendation. Well, as an employee or a contractor, you are in business for yourself. So asking for a recommendation when you do a good job is part of the job. Yeah. So, and in all reality, you do a good job. A recommendation or review is part of the compensation for doing a good job. It's a way of giving a tip to somebody. So, um, and you can reciprocate this where when people do a good job for you, be somebody who leaves a lot of reviews and then you can tell them, Hey, leave me, you know, could you leave me a recommendation or a review um, and do the same for them? And they're more inclined to do it. And then, yeah, for publications, I didn't know what to put there. And I think this is yeah. probably a holdover from years ago. So I do have a master's degree. You'll notice the name of my, my, my primary channel is Gringo Guide. So I'm actually published on that topic, the uh, etymology of contemporary usage and cultural implications of the word gringo. I did all of my research in Mexico years ago, worked with uh, some researchers from a university here in Mexico City. So for people that are like, oh, Jaren doesn't know Mexico. I'm like, well, I'm published on the topic in multiple languages. So, uh, <laughs> so I do. <laughs> That's cool. That's yeah. cool. I, I didn't even know that. Look at that. Yeah. Cool. Um, this is actually something I would highlight. So languages is always down here at the bottom. Uh, people who are bilingual and have this, in my opinion, it should be something you have that's in, because you have uh, room to add in your yep. headline section, right? Like English, Spanish, on, marketing leader or something. Yeah, yeah. bullet pointer. Like at the end oh, of mine, you yeah. have DM for info. Well, you know, I would put that in here that, you know, fluent in English and Spanish. Because... Yep. The odds of somebody getting down this far to find that out fairly it's low. So far below the fold. Yeah. When it's right here, all of a sudden you've got that one little extra thing that makes you stand out. This is another one of those one percents, right? It's that one yeah. percent higher chance of landing that job. So, okay. 
Um, and then we'll yeah. get into that next time because I know you're short on time. You have interviews scheduled today, which good luck on those, buddy. Yep. I really hope it goes well for you. Yeah, um, I got a handful. Yeah. So next time we'll get into uh, some of the strategies, how to find recruiters, form relationships with them so that they'll start looking for jobs for you or pointing you towards things. Okay, perfect. So between this stream and the next one, it looks like we'll, for now, we'll maintain the same time slot. You know, obviously that might change as work starts picking up or if new clients come on board, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, but as Bentley said, we can all, we can always pre-record these and drop these as premieres too to have a consistent time slot. So uh, for the handful of you guys on there, again, reach out to either one of us. I don't have any questions, anything you want us to cover, uh, whether you like this topic, if you don't. So we're trying some different things out on the channels. And really, again, I'm just trying to peel back the curtain to show more so uh, for the gringo guides um, type topics, yeah, it's more of a lifestyle. Here's how you get jacked. Here's how you move abroad. Here's here's how you pick your city. Here's how you speak Spanish. Here's how you meet girls or or dating potential in your in your local market. But how do you make money online? How do you how do you actually finance this lifestyle? And that that part it's not as fun. It's not as sexy, but it probably is the most important detail. So uh, we'll definitely peel back the curtain a bit more and give you insight into what to do, what not to do, and then what we're learning along the way. So I hope you and Enjoy the topic. And uh, again, feel free to reach out to us and, and let us know. Absolutely. Cool. All righty. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Bentley. And I look forward to uh, refreshing this, taking all the uh, best practices in the consideration that we just explored in these last couple of minutes. And then uh, we'll resume next week. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Pleasure. Yep, take care, everyone. Take Bye. care. Bye. Oh, the always the odd countdown before it cuts off. <laughs> I know I'm trying to find the button to